Ireland against New Zealand at Lansdowne Road. Ireland captained by Tom Kiernan playing his 52nd international. And the other man with so many caps, number four there, Willie John McBride playing his 49th international alongside number five, Kevin Mays, who plays for the first time in that Irish pack. Mike Gibson, of course, one of the great midfield players of all time. And opposite Gibson, getting his first all-black jersey in an international match, is Ian Hurst, the Canterbury centre three quarter. The big pack that distinguished back row, Kirkpatrick, Sutherland and Alex Wiley. And of course, Burgess restored to the position, the fly half position for this vital game for New Zealand. Joe Caram at fullback, the team's top scorer with 101 points. The referee waiting then. Joe Caram poised. In front of the ball, as you can see from that picture, the first scrum of the game. Maloney's first touch of the ball. Kennedy strikes, going grabs. Davidson's hat forward. And that, I would say, is the psychological advantage Ireland was seeking at the beginning of this game. That's the 25, the All Blacks 25. Ireland in their traditional emerald green shirts and white shorts. New Zealand's 25-yard line. Going Harris. Brilliant piece of robbing by John Maroney, but going tough as teak, stealing that away, Sutherland. And out of a terrible mess up, New Zealand struggled clear. Two, Ken Kennedy, the hooker. Next to him, Willie John McBride, Sean Lynch then. Top forward, Ray McLaughlin, 14 there, Tom Grace. Lifting in the line out, says Mr. Joseph. Relief for New Zealand. Joe Caram hasn't missed many of those all through this tour. McBride, and behind him, Mays, at the back, Terry Moore, Whiting, Hamish McDonald, and the other Whiting. Slattery couldn't put his hands around that one. Worth a try, though. New Zealand have yet to penetrate into the Irish half of the field. They got Roughly 10 yards to go from here. And New Zealand hooker penalised this time. The front row. Tony Norton alongside Graham Whiting and Kent Lambert, of course. The Cork Constitution fly half, Barry McGann. what Ireland wanted the early score now everything thrown into New Zealand's court Joe Caram
Brian catches. Fighting McDonald. Slattery. Not a good one, but it might be good if Gibson gets it. Williams and Gibson together. Robertson eventually. Maloney, this time Kennedy penalised by referee Mr. Marion Joseph. Still inside New Zealand's half, though, a little too far out. Going, Burgess. Going to Batty. Batty took it brilliantly. What a player this is. Look at him. Look at this fellow Batty. He's over the top, but he can't get there. Gibson's faster. Mike Gibson, his pace then. Getting Ireland out of serious trouble. But what a little explosive fellow this Grand Batty is. The tour's great success. Ireland's point scorer so far then McGann. Whitehead. Using every ounce of his 17 stone there. We're halfway through this, the first half. Still the only score on the board. Ireland three points from a penalty. Burgess. That's the one that looks for the gap. This is a Robertson, but a good tackle. That was very, very good by Slattery to number six. Robbing a man and doing what a good flanker should. Destroying and then creating. John Maloney then, the St. Mary's College scrum half. <laughs> Foot up, says the referee. Always nice to see a referee giving some indication to the crowd what the offence is for, because there are so many offences, aren't there now, in rugby, which it's difficult to see from the sideline. Tommy Kiernan. Sutherland's ball. What did he do? The big fellow. Batty. Ken Kennedy. Willie John McBride is up. One foot from the old black line. You can't get any closer than that. A vital throw, this one, for Batty. It's got to be good. Going close to touchdown. Harassed by Maloney. Allen's put in. And what can we expect from here? We've got a signal between the half-backs for Ireland. Tom Grace into the line as an extra man. And the referee telling, in fact, Willie John, that handling the ball in that situation, of course, is not allowed. So New Zealand, fortunately, if I may say so, to get away with that. And this is relief from the boot of Joe Carroll. The epitome of accuracy, that. And not only that, but a 40-yard game, too. Whiting, not straight. The shout came loud and clear from Marion Joseph. John Maloney then. More trying to hold. 
trying the wheel. Going, struggling free. Look at that strength. He's in the score. Well, that is why people say New Zealand without going is only half a team. I can't think of very many players with that sort of strength. Both he and Edwards run close to the ground, Gareth Edwards. And that was sheer strength and knowing exactly where the line was. And the crowd liked it too. It's great to hear appreciation of the crowd, despite the fact that it means now that New Zealand are on one point ahead of Ireland. And Joe Caram's kick could make the difference three points. Going harassing now, that's him number nine. See the way he snatches the ball from a big forward, pulls his way through three others, and then one tackle, two evasions. Kiernan got him slightly too late. Going. Not down there, regathered. The referee allowed him as a readjustment. Sid going. Kiernan won't be troubled with that one. Oh, he is. Just caught him nicely. Bob Gurge is dribbling and going forward. Referee right on the spot. One yard now from Ireland's line. Eventually, it's Wally McMaster, the Irish left wing. Wallace McMaster. Goings ball. He says strong to Burgess. Burgess there trying to find Greg Patrick it out. This is Alex Wiley. Wiley's got three men with him. Inside to Hurst, the wrong way it went. There was a try on. And because of Wally climbing in there, retaliation from Ray McLaughlin. The referee will have none of it, and it's a stiff talking to. But that was not going for the ball, of course. Tom Kiernan from his own 25. Joe Quarram to Batty. Here's the little dynamo. There he goes. Robertson in the middle, looking for support. Whiting knocks it forward. And this is a bit more like it now. Rugby, the quality, the perception, and the execution, the standard raising all the time. The 25, McGann. That's Whiting bending down. Number two, Tony Norton. Opposite him, Sean Lynch. Willie John, number two for Iron. Hamish McDonald. There he is. The little fellow. Sid going. Waiting for the heel. Sutherland has got Burgess with him. Turns though to Alex Wiley. Wiley back to Sutherland. The pickup on this side by top forward. Um, Lampert, Kent Lampert. And the referee calling to a halt. An absolutely thrilling first 40 minutes with Ireland trailing by six points to three in front of an enormous crowd here at Lansdowne Road. On the right now then, Ireland through Barry McGann to start this second half. Six points to three New Zealand in the lead at this stage. Glocher on the blind side, Maloney. Wallace McMaster. The cover came from 
Alan Sutherland. Still in Ireland's half of the field. Ireland's ball. Gibson over the top. Trying to ignore Flynn. Trying to make the overlap. On the 25 now. Can New Zealand get this? They can. And there's an overlap if the ball comes this way. Lampert on the blind side. Burgess can get there. Slips it into a kiss. Alex Wiley. Canterbury captain up there at the precise moment to take what was a precision pass. So Joe Caram, a difficult kick, the most difficult he's had. So, ten points to three now. A good pick up by Whiting. That's Kent Lambert. That's Bob Burgess. Look at the timing of that ball. Nothing could stop Wiley then. And on the far side, it's Tom Grace. And one of the many infringements of the line-out. Impossible to see what that was for. And McBride is going to try one of his specials with the pack. This is worth watching. Whether he comes off or not, it's worth a look. That's Willie John on the blind side. That's Fergus Slattery. Tackle Grant Batty. Maloney. Began. Flynn looking for the gap. To Gibson. Gibson tackled by Kirkpatrick, the New Zealand captain. This side. With Maloney. Gibson with it. Heavy pass. Oh, that was a shade late with the gap there. Kent Lambert for New Zealand. But my goodness, the crowd now rising. Scrum half, John Maloney there. Putting Ireland within striking distance with that sparkling run. Kennedy, the pack leader, on the 25. Joseph calling for the 15-yard scrummage in from the touchline. It's extraordinary how many times the ball is not thrown in straight. Not the easiest of jobs, of course. Going Jokan. Worth a chance that was, the ball dropped a little short. Kiernan. Oh, beautiful bit of running by Tom Kiernan. Oh, that does the heart good to see. Now Ireland on the attack. Beautiful one to get. Can he get there? He's got Wiley chasing him. Wiley gets there. And Sutherland covers. Well, that was staggering, that cover tackle by Alex Wiley, showing tremendous pace to hold Mike Gibson. And now, this game on the boil, a good deflection, McBride. Ten yards or so from the All Blacks line. Kiernan's adventure, bringing the game now within striking distance for Ireland. Penalty to Ireland for going, not putting the ball in straight. Barry McGann, already successful with one penalty goal. And this strictly within his range. Just the 
shared over five minutes to go. Now it's four points the difference. A try from Ireland could do it. Will the All Blacks now throw everything into attack? This could be a tremendous five minutes. Joe Karam. That was a wise one, the long one. And it was directly in the touch. Well, psychologically, that's good for Ireland. This is the man who made a superb run a few seconds ago, John Maloney. John Maloney then, or oh, going robbed him well, but that's McGann into the gap for Flynn. Sutherland covering, hammered to the ground by Slattery. The 10 yard line. On the blind side, this could be drama. This could be drama. Can he get there? Can he get there? The ball is dead, I think. It's a try. It's a try. Tommy Grace. Everything there now, resting on that boot of Barry McGann, who'd be in his place. The agony on his face, a beautiful little flick on the blind side from Maloney. And that's Tom Grace's chip ahead. He chased. And he just made it. And that's it, I think. The referee calling things to a halt. And so, the men of Ireland, who traditionally have hearts as big as any stadium, have succeeded where no other country in the British Isles have succeeded. Well, have you ever seen anything quite as thrilling and exciting as that climax at Lansdowne Road, Dublin? I'm sure that it'll be celebrated here in the streets of Dublin until the early hours of the morning. Ireland then succeeding where Wales and Scotland and England failed. I hope very much that you've enjoyed following the